Liberty and Lipscomb, it's the postseason that comes to mind. In 2019 and 2020, the Flames and the Bisons met with the A-Sun Championship and a trip to the big dance on the line. And twice, Liberty prevailed. Tonight, the two programs square off once again with the season hanging in the balance. Can Lipscomb finally find postseason success against the Flames? Or will it be Liberty moving one step closer to a fourth straight A-Sun title? It's Liberty. It's Lipscomb. It's the quarterfinals of the A-Sun Championship. And it starts right now. Welcome to the madness, A-Sun Madness. Welcome inside Liberty Arena for this A-Sun quarterfinal game alongside Paul Nazigan. I'm Matt Warner and Naz. Boy, we should have a good one here tonight as you take a look at the bracket and where we are in terms of this night. Four games going on simultaneously. We'll be keeping you up to date on all of those. But speaking about this matchup, Liberty and Lipscomb, what a rich history the two have over the past few years. In fact, they met back on February 8th in this very building. Liberty won that contest. Since that point, Liberty 3-3, three and three, Lipscomb 4-2. and two. Naz, how have these te two teams changed over the past few weeks? Yeah, Liberty uh, suffered a couple losses over the last two weeks, but they've corrected some things, and they kind of come into this game playing really well and playing with a lot of confidence. Lipscomb, on the other hand, that game back in February was really the first time in a long time they had finally gotten their full squad back together from injury. They had just enough time to really kind of gel and put it all together. They are playing their best basketball of the season right now. Uh, let's take a look at our impact players presented by Foster Fuels. And these are just two impact players tonight. They may be the most impactful players in all the conference. Matt, these guys are two titans of the A-Sun Conference. Asana Asajula, three-time all-conference first-teamer. Darius McGee for Liberty, two-time player of the year. These guys are absolutely phenomenal. Look, they have incredible numbers that you see there. Both guys do so much for the teams, way much more than just scoring. Do so much, they, they lead the team, they're great competitors. And here's the thing, if you've got your team and you're ready to make a championship run and you need a guy to build on, both of these guys fit the bill. With more on Asajla and this Lipscomb squad, we check in for the first time with the third member of our crew, Emily Austin. Yeah, guys, Lipscomb head coach Lenny Acuff isn't ignoring the fact that Liberty has had the edge when it comes to winning in the A-Sun tournament. We're big-time underdogs. He told me at shoot-around this morning, we cannot come in and play this game backwards. We have to be confident, aggressive. Guys, one thing to look out for is how Asana Sajla starts this game. Coach Acuff said when he starts the game well, we tend to continue playing well. So how we get him out of the gates is a big deal. Yeah, thanks, Emily. And how Liberty defends the Sajla, that's a big deal as yes. well. Buckle up, here we go. Postseason basketball underway. Liberty Flames control it. Liberty last played on Saturday, an overtime winner over Kennesaw State. Quickly the ball in the hands of Darius McGee. That will be a theme here tonight. Keegan McDowell, three ball, off the mark, and Asajla pulls the rebound. Liberty, one of the best shooting teams in the country from three, fourth in the nation in three-point percentage. Lipscomb gives up more than all but one team in the nation from beyond the arc. Asajla gets it in the post. Shiloh Robinson matched up with him. And that one deflected out of bounds as McGee stuck a hand in there. It'll be Lipscomb ball with seven on the shot clock. Yeah, I think Asajla a little surprised that Liberty didn't double him, but uh, in games we've seen in the past, Liberty will mix that up all night. They'll single him, they'll double him just to try to keep him off balance. Four on the shot clock, Jones gets it back to Asajla. He wasn't aware, and that extra pass ends up costing them a shot clock violation to begin the game for Lipscomb. Traditional starting five for the Flames, same lineup we've seen virtually all season long. McGee, McDowell, Rode, Vinzant, and Robinson. Again, Liberty winning this matchup 78-69 back on February 8th. That was a game in which Liberty kind of took control in the first half as that deep three goes down and Darius McGee's off and running. Yeah, it's always interesting to see what other teams, how they match up with Darius. That's on Parker Hazen. Again, he's got some size and length, but Darius just too deep on that three. 
Sajla working on Kyle Rode now. Powers his way into the lane. Couldn't convert. Fight for the rebound. Still fighting for it. Asajla had it and then taken away. That was Darius McGee sneaking in there to knock it out of the hands of the big fella. Well, Liberty knows you're going to have to get all five down in the paint there to rebound against a guy like Asajula. And Zant off the mark with the three ball. Lenny Acuff saying if Liberty shoots it the way they did last time we met, as they get an over and back, they say Pruitt dri dribble that off his own leg. Yeah, I, that's what I thought. Pruitt making his case, but... So a turnover gives it back to the Flames, leading here in the early stages, 3-0. Lenny Acuff saying, if they shoot it as well as they did last time, we're going to have a real problem. Liberty yeah. was dynamic from beyond the arc in that first meeting. Yeah, such a big part of their offense. And again, they got other guys that can spread it around. But McGee, same spot, another deep three. That one off the mark. Pruitt quickly the other way. Yeah, I really like Pruitt. He's just a really sound, tough point guard. Looking inside, they give it to Asajla. Double team comes. There's the double. Again, mixing it up. Behind the back pass. <laughs> Man, Asajla is so skilled. He, I tell you, leads him in points, yeah. rebounds, assists, and blocks. And Matt, he was on the all-academic team. I mean, he is a smart guy, a great basketball IQ. Sees the floor so well. Great defensive play by Vinzant. That is what he does for this Flames squad. Provides the defense. Kyle Rhodes turned to hoist from deep. That's off the mark. And a whistle going to go against Vinzant as he sent Benham to the deck. Well, Lenny Acuff, what a career he has had. Just picked up his 600th yeah. career win in that Tuesday victory over North Florida. A great career. They're at Alabama Huntsville, D2 power before coming to Lipscomb in his third season now with the Bisons. Benham going to put it on the deck, drive, gets in the lane, off the window, and good. So Trey Benham with his first points. He was held scoreless in the last meeting with the Flames, but on the board here early. Again, they use that high screen from Asajula. Ball screen, sometimes we'll do back cuts off of that. A lot of guys, a lot of movement. That's what makes their offense so tough. McGee gets in the lane, a little bump, couldn't get it to fall. So the Flames have come out a little cold from the field now. One of six to begin this ball game. Now Asajula right at Preston couldn't yeah. finish. Doesn't finish, but you can see the skill. I mean, he can catch on the run, put the ball on the bounce, and got all the way for an easy one. It didn't fall for the Bisons. Dowell gets it into the post. Shiloh Robinson has a size yeah. advantage on Benham. Tries to spin baseline. Now Benham knocks it out of his hands and it goes out of bounds. Richie McKay, what a job he's done since returning to Liberty. Three straight A-Sun championships. They're hoping to make a fourth this season. These two coaches have so much respect for each other. Two of the great guys in this league. And what you see, Matt, is both teams kind of run most of their offense through their through their best player. Nice steal there by Jones. Jones picks it off, tries to leave it behind for Benham. He gets to the free throw line. And they kick it back out and reset the offense. Yeah, Lipscomb not afraid to push in transition, and I, I like that decision. Anytime you can get Liberty in transition, not have to face the pack line, it's to your advantage. Hayes and able to get around Preston, but that left-handed layup doesn't fall. Both offenses starting slow here today. McDowell kicks it out. Kyle Rowe now to the corner. Robinson gives to McDowell, left alone. That three ball in and out. The rebound to Preston, puts it up and in. Nice, nice job by Blake Preston. Again, when you're in there, you just got to pick a spot. And he, he established his area. Ball came right to him. Big finish. There's Caleb Coleman, who just checked in. He'll shoot the three. That's well off the mark. Lenny Acuff saying, hey, we try to buy a few minutes for Asana Sajla when we can in the first half. But in their first game, as McGee launches the three, that's off the mark. In their win over North Florida on Tuesday, they rode their starters yeah. hard. Well, it's tournament time, Matt. There is no tomorrow if you don't win, so 
Yeah, that was an impressive, impressive win the other night against North Florida. Good take there by Trey Benham what? all the way to the hole. Benham the blow by, finishes with the left hand. He's got all four points for Lipscomb. Benham the son of Jason Benham, Liberty alum. Both Jason and his uncle, both big time baseball players here at Liberty. McGee gets to the baseline and gets to the rim for two. McGee back to back A Sun Player of the Year awards. What a career he's had in a Flames uniform and coming off a 47 point performance against Kennesaw State. Preston whistled for the foul as Hazen took it to the rim. He'll have a couple of free throws when we come back. Slow start here in Lynchburg. Both offenses feeling their way out. Liberty by three. This presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Foster Fuels, Turn Up the Heat, and by Carter Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Six minutes into this ace on quarterfinal, Liberty leading Lipscomb by three. All right, now it's time for our keys to the game. How'd you break this one down? Yeah, it's very interesting. So both these teams are averaging 74 points a game, but they get those points in very different ways. So, you know, Liberty loves the three ball, and they shoot it very well, like 40%. So for Lipscomb, you've got to defend the arc, limit the threes, contest every three, and that's going to put you in good shape. And for Liberty, you got to defend the paint. Such a huge portion of their offense. Listen, most of it runs through Asadzula. Yeah. So it's either his scoring in the paint, or when he comes out to the high post, he is such a great passer to guys cutting to the paint or using the ball screens to get in there. So their, their bread and butter is right inside that paint area. Liberty's going to have to defend it. First free throw missed from Parker Hazen. And speaking of defense, Lipscomb's defense has really played well here the past week and a half, two weeks. In fact, their last two games against Central Arkansas and UNF, those are two of their lowest opponent scoring outputs of the season. Yeah, I mean, you talk about losing Asan Asajula for, for a big chunk of games, Trey Benham as well. So it's not only getting into an offensive flow, but it's, yes, it's honing your defense. And I'm telling you, both sides of the Lipscomb ball, they are do, playing really well right now. Kyle Rhodes spinning back to the free throw line. Kicks it out and open McGee from three. That's pure. McGee, yeah. eight points here early. Pruitt, Pruitt cheated a little bit to try to poke it away, but he left too much space for Darius. Check in with Emily. Emily? Yeah, Matt Hudalinia Cubs said he likes how his guys are guarding. Yes, we got a slow start to our offense, but I really like how we're playing defense. Let's play and scramble. That three-pointer off the mark from Benham. Lipscomb made a season low three threes in their win on Tuesday against UNF. Yeah. McGee with a man in his face couldn't connect. Yeah, a little contact as he was in the air, but yeah, you're right. A three ball for Lipscomb is, is not really what they're looking for. Sure, they can shoot a few, but man, they do such a, a great job from 17 feet and in. Sajla gets in the paint. And again, he's missed some ones that you, yeah. you, you expect him to make. Yeah. Flames still have kept him off the scoreboard. Yeah, a little surprising, but again, you're not gonna he's not gonna keep missing those all night. He's coming off a 28-point performance on Tuesday. Man, what a, what an outing. Road surveying the defense. As McDowell left all alone. That three goes down. Can't forget about King and McDowell. They lost him, and he makes Lipscomb pay. Yeah, Matt, he came off of that curl. I think he was a little bit surprised. There was no defender chasing him. He took that just extra split second and made sure that three ball counted. McDowell shooting over 42% from three-point range. That's 17th best in the country. And you take a look at Liberty's numbers overall. They shoot a lot of them. They make, make a, a lot, lot of them. them. And they shoot a really good percentage. Yeah, they really do. And again, it, it's not something that maybe is noticeable. I mean, they're not just out there firing. They'll run offense. And again, Especially like with Darius, if guys get up on him too closely, you'll see guys going off the dribble. But again, in their normal flow, they got great movement. That ball moves around, and they'll find the open guy from three, and they are very successful beyond the arc. Darius McGee, what a year he's had. Actually, just with that last three-pointer, he set the A-Sun career three-point record. 361 now. Three balls for Darius McGee, yeah. surpassing Garrison Matthews of Lipscomb, actually. 
And that's saying something. Garrison Matthews, what a player in his day now in the NBA. Boy, what effort. Yeah. Trey Benham is a man possessed <laughs> here tonight. He's got six points, that one on a second attempt. Yeah, what a fiery competitor. Hey, it's not just his ability and his score, it's his intensity that got him into the starting lineup in this year. And man, he has been a mainstay for this Bisons program. Road fading away in the paint. Off the mark, Asajula pulls the rebound. Liberty leads it by six, under 12 to go here in the first half. Sajla in the post, tries to spin baseline on Blake Preston. Now gets to that left hand and gets his first shot to fall. I mean, he's got the strength to back his way in there, and he's got the versatility. He can go over either shoulder and a real nice soft touch around the rim. McGee gets in the paint, hangs, and he's fouled. Late whistle, they got him on the arm. So he'll go to the line for a couple when we come back. These offenses starting to warm up a little bit. Darius McGee with eight early points to lead the way for the Flames. Well, you know it's March when Liberty and Lipscomb hook up. They've had some memorable battles, certainly, in the postseason. This isn't the only battle going on right now. Taking a look at the ace on scoreboard. Jacksonville out to an early lead on Central Arkansas. A tight game there in Jacksonville State. FGCU leading Bellarmine. Now remember, it, the tournament reseeds after tonight. So the bracket that maybe you've seen online or whatever, like it's not a traditional bracket. It will be reseeded after tonight. So we got to keep that in mind as we progress later into these ball games. But uh, and in, in that regard, it almost helps teams just focus on the game at hand sure. because you don't know the result. You can't look ahead and go, oh, if somebody gets knocked off, I, we, we face an easier run. So with the reseeding, it's just, it, it's kind of a new nuance. A lot of uh, conferences don't do that, but uh, it, it's something that adds some excitement to it. McGee gets both free throws to fall. He's up to 10 points already tonight. McGee is second leading scorer in the country. One of the great offensive seasons in the nation. And again, we've talked about this. You'll see Asana Sajala up high. He'll set some ball screens. The guys will cut off him, and then he'll dive to the block. But wherever he is, he's a threat. Sajala has it. Fading away over Preston. I think Liberty will live with him taking that shot tonight. Yeah. And again, not a bad shot, and certainly a shot that's in Asana's uh, uh, repertoire. But yeah, any, any way you can get him farther away from the basket, the better. Brody Peebles handling the basketball. The freshman out of Hartsell, Alabama, just checked in. Ten on the shot clock. Preston going to work. Now looking to kick out, and he throws it away. Good defense by Jones to deny Darius McGee. So there you go. You get a touch on Asajula. They'll work it around and then watch ball screen or dive. Kicks it right back out for an open three. That one rattles out out of the hands of Greg Jones. Even when he's backing people down, you see Asajla always surveying yes. the court, always looking. He is such a good passer. McGee, it, the defense parts, he takes it all the way to the rim, and that is the easiest two he may get all night. Yeah, and, and Asaj just looked away for a split second. I think he was trying to talk to a teammate and didn't see Darius coming, so he couldn't even give a little help. Liberty's pushed this lead out to eight. Oh, look at that pass. <laughs> and that is why you, you see points in the paint. Back to that McGee bucket. Man, just that, that's a wicked crossover, and... Again, Asajal, I think, was on the other side of the lane. Just looked away, didn't see him coming, and just that's too easy. But coming back down this end, I mean, Asan Asajal threaded the needle to that cutting Parker Hazen. I don't know how he got in there. Beautiful pass, great pickup, and all Liberty could do was foul and send Parker Hazen to the line because that was an easy. That was going to be an easy two. Asajal is the only guy in the country to average at least 14.99 and four and a half <laughs> assists. The only guy in the country to do it. Yeah. And again, you don't get credit for, but he's up top of the key. He's setting ball screens. He's getting letting cutters run off of him. Just does everything for this Bisons team. Warfield now kicks it out. McGee gets it back on the wing. Oh, had that one deflected and a foul called. And 
Did they get a Sajla? That's number two, if so. Oh, wow. They did, so two early fouls on Asana Sajla. That is the nightmare if you're Lipscomb. You cannot get him into foul trouble. And he's gonna immediately make his way over to the bench. So now you have to initiate your offense and have some other guys step up without the big man on the floor. Kyle Rowe at his pocket picks. Jones has played a great defensive game. Takes it. Oh, the denial! <laughs> McGee rises up and sticks it to the glass! Oh my goodness, Matt! The smallest guy on the floor just with the rejection. Amazing! Now the Flames turn it over at the other end. Well, good. That gives us a chance to see the replay. <laughs> Wow, man. Yes, great hustle. Chases it down. Timing, elevation. Get that thing out of here. The chase down block for Darius McGee. Well, he has a 48-inch vertical, so he's, <laughs> he's not the biggest in stature, but he can bounce. Look at Benham. I'm telling you. Known as an elite shooter, but he's been taking it strong to the rim so far tonight and with success. Yeah, and you can see he's got a mindset. He is his toughness, intensity. Oh, McGee's breaking it all out. Crossover, three ball, that rattled out. <laughs> Man, had that blown, I think the roof would have blown off his place, Pat. J.J. Johnson, oh, crossover tough. of the zone. Tough cross, Ooh. And he draws the foul. They're gonna get Kyle Rowe with a little bit of body on the end of that. Yeah, we'll really nice crossover by K.J. Johnson. Set his man up left, went hard right. Again, you see the mentality and the philosophy of Lipscomb. Again, a lot of teams just bail out for threes, and yeah. they know who they are. And they've got great penetrators. Certainly, they got a guy that you can build around in the paint in Asan Asajula. But again, everybody knows their role. They know kind of when they're at their best. We've seen Benham go off the dribble. KJ Johnson right there. Got one of two. And this is what they do, too. They get to the line more than yes. anybody in the A's Sun. They're sixth in the nation in free throw attempts, in fact. And again, that's huge in a game like this. With Liberty playing a little slower, not as slow as years past. But anytime you get some free points against Liberty, the better. The lob of Robinson. <laughs> Hey, it all counts the same. Well, he did a, he pulled back a little bit, or else that thing probably would have ejected into the first row. Again, get the basket. Don't worry about necessarily how it looks. Johnson again able to oh. get to the rim and lay it in. Pretty move. Pretty move, and again, a lot of contact, great body control and ball control by K.J. Johnson well, right there. And with Noah Sajla in the post, that may open things up a little bit in the lane for a guy like Johnson. You're exactly right. You're playing a little more five out on the perimeter, a lot of lanes to dribble and get to the paint. The pass to Robinson, no. Ball loose, picked up, and the Flames will keep it. McDowell on the wing now. They go back inside to Shiloh Robinson. Has the mismatch with Pruitt. Yeah. Kicks out, McDowell, now he'll drive and kick. Three ball for Warfield, too strong, and the rebound to Pruitt. They passed up a great mismatch inside. Can't end yeah. up cashing in. And again, there's unselfishness. I would have liked to see Keegan McDowell shoot that when he got his man up in the air. Oh. Johnson spinning and laying it in. Oh, K.J. Johnson with five points off the bench. K.J. is definitely at his best, man, when he's kind of shaking and baking and Great spin move and finish at the rim. He's had a down year offensively, but we've seen what he can do over the last couple of seasons. He averaged 13 and a half a year ago as the Flames throw it away. So a turnover will give it back to Lipscomb. And these Bisons have it within two. Liberty leading 19-17. 6.42 to go here in the first half. Well, here we are at the 642 mark. Hassan Asajla has two points, but it's been Trey Benham that has picked up the slack. Eight points for the freshman. And he's been doing it getting to the rim here tonight. With more on Benham, we check in once again with Emily. Yeah, guys, Coach 
Acuff said that Benham's learning that you don't need to score to affect the game. He didn't play great last game here at Liberty, but he had 100 people here to see him. He tried too hard, like a lot of young kids. He equates how I play if I make shots or not, and there's more to it. So he's learning that when he's shooting it well, we're a lot better team. And with the team lead eight points, it's a good time for Lipson. McGee will pull up on the baseline. That goes down. Yeah, going back to Benham. He didn't get himself into the starting lineup because of his scoring. <laughs> yeah. He got in for his toughness, his defense. That's just his it. Intensity. The scoring is just a bonus. Go take us saying oh. he brings a physicality, and yes. you're seeing it on display. Ten first half points. He has been aggressive with that, taking it with the left hand. Yeah. He is really his mindset. He's setting a tone for the Bisons tonight, attacking the rim. McGee again weaving his way through traffic. Passes out. Shiloh Robinson will try the three. That was way off the mark. Yeah, had Pruitt running at him. Good contest there by Pruitt. Johnson gives it up. They get it right back to him. Trying to use a screen. Kick out to Pruitt on the wing. 12 on the shot clock. Benham lost the handle, tracks it down. Again, driving and getting to that left hand, unable to convert that time. Yeah, really. Shiloh Robinson in pursuit, went high. I'm not sure if he got a little fingertip on that. Altered it maybe just enough. McGee steps back. Nope, whistle first. So a foul committed by Lipscomb. That one goes against Pruitt, his first. Most part here tonight, this officials letting them bang a little bit. Yeah, and that's and what like you that. hope for in yes. this in a tournament setting like this. Yeah, no ticky tack. They're letting, and they're calling it consistently both ways. It's been a really great officiated game so far. Kyle Road. I think Johnson may have come back yeah. and got a hand in his face right when he let that one go. It missed badly. Yeah, that's what you got to do. They're going to hit some liberty, but if your lips come, you got to contest hard every three. Nasovic just checked into the game. He gets in the paint, working on Road. Finally putting it up, can't get it to fall. He was so dangerous early in the season before an illness kind of just kind of took him off his game, lost a lot of weight, still working his way back. Warfield, three ball, way strong. That one nearly goes out of bounds, saved by Jones in the corner. Lipscomb's doing the job, they're contesting threes. Liberty not shooting to their normal percentage. Liberty shooting. Just under 35% from the field. Johnson driving by Benzant and he gets the whistle. There's no secret what they're trying to do offensively. <laughs> it's just, yeah. hey, you take it to the rim or I'll take it to the rim. Yeah, especially with the big fella still on the bench. And again, they really, they know their role. They know who they are. They're spreading things out. Especially a guy like KJ, so tough off the dribble. This is that free throw. That was the second foul on Benzan. You're one of two. Lips come now four of eight from the free throw line. Liberty has not trailed here tonight. They had a lead as big as eight at one point. It's a little zone here by Lipscomb. Behind the back pass, saved in bounds. Dangerous play. Preston able to track it down. Gets about two feet away, couldn't convert. Puts it up a second time, couldn't get that to fall. And now it's deflected out of bounds. It will stay with Lipscomb. And that gets us to a timeout. Flame shooting 33% from the floor. They cling to a one-point lead. Well, this is how Lipscomb got to this game. First round action, they defeated North Florida, 74-65. Asajla, 28-12 at six. Now, they got here doing that. 
they've had success here tonight without Asajla on the floor a lot of the time. And when he has been, he hasn't really been that successful. So they have found other ways to hang around in this ball game here this evening. Yeah, and also what helps Lipscomb is the game plan very similar to that against North Florida. North Florida team that likes to shoot a lot of threes, right. and they did a really nice job against them uh, to get here tonight. And they're continuing that effort, really altering Liberty from beyond the arc, not giving them anything easy. Liberty just 3 of 15 from 3. Johnson again driving. That one was halfway down, and it popped out. Yeah, another penetration deep into the paint. Doesn't fall for KJ, but they've really got the recipe. McGee with a runner, too strong. The rebound pulled down by Lipscomb, and here we go. And I like how Lipscomb's pushing the, the transition on misses. Again, maybe not for a shot, but getting Liberty back on their heels, bringing it up quickly. Jones has it on the wing. Eight on the shot clock. Hazen spins baseline. Oh, what a finish. He had a great ball game against North Florida. 17 points tied a season high on Tuesday night. Four yeah. points here so far tonight. And a really heady move. He knew the double was coming, and so he made his move before the double could arrive. McDowell, pump fake, freed himself. A second one. Now he's looking for help. Wasn't ready to pull the trigger. Six on the shot clock. McGee with the basketball. Pruitt defending him. McGee steps back, launches. Front iron, no. The follow almost went down. But Lipscomb comes away with it. They have the ball in a one-point lead, their first lead of the night. Johnson, no. Fight for the rebound, and it's snagged by Preston. Liberty offense just in an absolute funk right now. O of their last eight from the field, and Richie McKay yes. takes a timeout to talk about it. Here was that move by Hazen. Yeah. Tough move. You know, you again saw the double coming, spun out of it. Tough finish on the opposite side, but yeah, you're right, man. The, the Liberty offense just really looks out of sync. They don't want to be in a situation where they run the shot clock down, they really not put the defense at disadvantage, and then Darius just launches a long one. That's not what they want. Uh, and so really, really smart timeout right here. Get him over there, get him a quick rest, get everybody back on the same page. Yeah, Liberty normally very efficient offense tonight, shooting 28% from the field. And this is kind of the, the worst case scenario, right? If you're Liberty, if you're if you're talking about, boy, what can't yeah. happen? It's, <laughs> you, you, you can't have nobody else have, have a big night. You know what Darius is going to give you right now? No one else has really risen up. No one else has made more than one shot from the field. And you can't really have droughts like this. Yeah, I mean, this is a kind of a drought from two and from three. Yeah. Man. And again, we know what Darius is going to do. It's, it's the other guys are really going to have to contribute. Kyle Road hands off to McGee. Guarded by Benham. Five on the shot clock. Steps back. Another tough look. It rattles out. And that one will stay with the Bisons. Well, you're getting I'm, that's back to back possessions yeah. where basically you're getting a desperation heave from Darius McGee yeah. before the shot clock sounds. And again, you got one of the best guys doing it, but. You're not going to be able to sustain that kind of offense, uh, certainly not for a game, but even these stretches, um, it's not pretty. Liberty's got to get more ball movement, more guys touching it, more cutting. Five minutes now since the last time Liberty scored. Benham catches, fires, in, out. Oh, oh man. Man, that looked good the whole way. This he was halfway back down the court. He thought it was in. Yeah, and it was right behind us. It looked pure, but... Just rattles out for him, but you, he's playing with such confidence, man. Completely different from what we saw on this court a month ago. Oh, now the steal, Pruitt takes it away. Ahead of the pack, lays it in for two, and the turnover leads to points on the other end. Again, Matt Liberty, sixth turnover. Careless, and that one leads to points. And now a foul on Pruitt. A 7-0 run for Lipscomb as they lead now by three. And Here's that steal just a moment ago. Yeah, Pruitt, just great eyes, great timing. Just kind of snatches it, and right here, protects it. Sees, you look over his shoulder, see Darius coming. Make sure that thing goes in. Good, good defensive play and finish there by Will Pruitt. He'll earn himself a seat. 
Liberty trying to find some offense. It's been almost six minutes now since their last bucket. And Zant gets it out to McDowell. Thought about it, passed it up. Now in some trouble. Six on the shot clock. Kyle Rowe handles. Gives it to a cutting Shiloh. Robinson couldn't finish, but he draws the foul. Good find from sure Kyle was. Rode late in the shot clock. Yeah, great presence of mind. Knew the shot clock was running down. Rather than force something, great awareness. Man, that ball, was, that was a dime right to Shiloh. Foul called on Hayes in his first. Shiloh hits the first free throw. He has three points tonight. He had 13 in the first meeting with Lipscomb. One more free throw coming. Right now the Flames just trying to get to the half and regroup. But when you're in a little bit of a drought and offense isn't clicking, you've got to rely on your defense and get stops. Easier said than done when guys like double, like zero right here. KJ Johnson has the ball in his hands. This crowd comes to its feet. Watch for this Liberty defense. Shake and bake, spinning from KJ, and then you got some other guys spotted up. If he doesn't have anything, watch for a kick out. Here we go. Johnson kicks it out. Benham, deep three from the wing. That's too strong. Liberty will get one last look at it. McKee crosses half court, hoists one up. That tap-in waved off by Benzan as the three-point attempt was coming up short. And so we'll head to the break with Lipscomb leading it by one. 24-23, a fantastic first half for the Bisons. We check in now with Emily standing by with Richie McKay. Coach McKay, you guys are shooting less than 30% from the field, 18% from three. How satisfied are you with the shot selection in the first half? Uh, we're rushed. We're a little nervous. I'm not worried about us making shots. We just got to take better ones. Thank you for your time. Best of luck in the se second half. Matt, back over to you. Listen, if you're Lipscomb right now, you have to be thrilled with the situation you're in. On the road, leading by one at the break. We'll show you first half stats and highlights when we return. You're watching ASUN Basketball on ESPN+. Plus. Well, an upset brewing, perhaps. Lipscomb leading Liberty 24-23 at the break. Alongside Paul Nazian, I'm Matt Warner. Naz, Lipscomb, you have to be thrilled. Not only are you leading by one, Asana Asajal played only eight minutes in the entire first half, and you're still in this situation. Yeah, it's tournament time. There's nothing easy. You can throw seeds out. I think at this point, both these teams came in here fighting hard. And, uh, yeah, if you're listening, you've got to be feeling good. Uh, let's take a look at the first half highlights. Of course, we came in talking about Asana Sajla, the impact he would make on this game. While he was in there, Liberty did a great job defending him. Just one of five from the field in the early going. Yeah, they defended him and hit some shots on the other end and had a little bit of a cushion. Yeah, he picked up those two early fouls, had to take a seat. In his absence, it was Trey Benham stepping up. The freshman, ten first-half points, most of them going to the rim just like that. Man, he set such a tone, attacked the rim. Great intensity. Other guys got involved, too. We saw K.J. Johnson attack the rim as well and score. And then for Liberty, offense did not come easy. They did not make a shot from the field in the last 6.38 of the first half. A lot of forced looks, and they're sitting here shooting 26% from the field, and that big reason why they're trailing. Yeah, Darius did what he could, but it's going to take more guys, more support help, and just better ball movement. Taking a look at the first half stats presented by Carter Bank & Trust. Remember, I mean, Lipscomb is a throwback, right? They're not shooting threes. Yes, they're, they're not, not worried about, about threes. It. They're just getting it to the rim, and it's paying off those 20 points in the paint so yeah, far tonight. and they are doing the job right there against Liberty. That was the key to the game that I had. They've got to limit Liberty from beyond three. They are doing it, and they're playing their game, scoring in the paint. They certainly are. Strong first half for Lipscomb. We'll see what kind of adjustments these two head coaches have in the second half. When we come back, we'll take a look around the A-Sun, get you caught up on those other quarterfinal matchups happening around the league here tonight. Halftime here in Lynchburg. Lipscomb leading Liberty 24-23. And, and as you never know, come postseason time, how teams are going to respond in ball games, how they'll handle the pressure of a one-and-done situation. 
Lipscomb has stepped up here tonight, certainly. Yeah, and I'm not surprised at all. We set it up at the Open. Um, they had these last couple weeks getting everybody back, playing hard. We've seen how it's helped their offense. They're playing great defense. They're doing exactly what they need to do on that end as well. <laughs> they are just, man, they, they, are, they had the command of that the first aggressor. half. Yeah. They certainly were. Uh, let's take a look around the conference. Remember, here's the bracket coming into tonight. And once again, we got to remind you, it will reseed after this evening. But taking a look at the scores, everybody at halftime, FGCU, a close one with Bellarmine. Jacksonville well up yeah, on Central Arkansas. Right How about that? <laughs> Kennesaw State, those young owls putting up a fight against the number one overall seed. They're giving them all they want here tonight. And listen, Liberty just saw Kennesaw State on Saturday. I'll just say. We're not surprised. No, the way they, they played in that ball game, I'm not surprised. Yeah, make it, they forced Liberty to overtime, shot the ball from three really well, made a nice comeback the, the other night to get into this game, and it looks like they are playing well again this evening. They certainly are. It's postseason basketball. March Madness in full effect. We'll keep an eye on those scores as we continue. We've got a good one here. One point game at the break when we return. Paul Nazigan will break down one of the key plays from the first half. Lipskin leading by one at the half. Jason Benham in the house. He's loving what he's seeing from his son here tonight. As the Bisons are up at the break, all right, Nads. Oh, I don't know what that's all about. All right, let's say, let's just get to Nads's notes. All right. Yeah, let's get away from that scary marshmallow whatever that peak, is. Whatever that's that right. Is. Take us into a play from well, the first half. I may lift some game key that they had to defend the arc, and they are doing an exactly what they need to do. A perfect job as we watch this one. Watch this. You're going to see guys scrambling. You'll see some switching on screens. Watch the, the, the closeness, nothing is free, and Liberty's doing a good job of moving the ball, but there's a hand in their face, nothing easy, no free looks, and look what they get. You get Darius having to take a step back, off balance three, that is really great defense by Lipscomb. That's why they're up by one. If they can put another half together like that, they're going to be in really good shape. Well, Lenny Acuff has said, wait, we've really focused on our defense down the stretch, and it's paying off so far tonight. Speaking of Lenny Acuff, he caught up with our Emily Austin just a few moments ago. Coach, I chewed around and you said, we have to have a second guy who steps up. Trey Benham was that guy in the first half. How has he provided this burn? Really played well. He's, I, think, I mean, he's missed good looks at three he normally makes, but he's been really good. He's a strong left-hand driver, and he's got it to the backboard. So he's really helped us. What did you like about how your defense played in that first half? Well, I think we're playing real hard. Um, we, now, they missed a lot of shots that normally make. I mean, it's a make-or-miss game. But if you'd have told me that Hassan would have two points, played eight minutes, we're 0 for 6 from 3 and 4 for 8 from the foul line, we got the lead, sign me up for that. <laughs> That's a block in the second half, guys. That's exactly yeah. what we're saying. He's thrilled to be in this spot. And now you'll certainly see a whole lot of Asajla here in the second half. All right, now, as you gave us the keys to the game early on, Take a look now what we've seen and how they've kind of matched up with what you talked about. Yeah, let's start with Lipscomb. I said defend the arc, and man, Check. what a job yeah. they are doing right there. You know, keep it literally three for 18. And again, they may hit some, but you can see it is a all sellout approach. Nothing easy, no free looks. And then for Liberty, defend the paint. And again, Liberty's coming up a little short, even with Asajula out. Uh, Lipscomb did a, a fabulous job of attacking the paint, getting to the rim and uh, we're, we're getting to the free throw line. So again, who's winning the battle of the keys? Lipscomb is, a uh, long way to go. Should be an exciting second half here. Certainly should. We'll see if this Liberty offense can start to find some footing and make adjustments. Remember, Liberty really, since that Lipscomb game, that was the first game where they kind of started to have some of these second half yes. slides. Yes. It happened in the Lipscomb game. In fact, in the second half of that one, the Lips Lipscomb offense shot 60% from the field. Liberty struggled in three or four more second halves after that. Today, they need to flip the script, and they need to have a stronger second half here after struggling in the first. Yeah, you could kind of say they escaped that first half. I mean, they're lucky to be just down one. You cannot have another half like that. They've got to tighten the defense up if you're Liberty, and you've got to have some of those shots start falling. Asajula powering his way in. Couldn't get to fall, but right. they'll get another look at it. Hazen, the hustle play. Yeah, just getting in there, doing all I could do to poke it away and retain the possession. Good hustle there by Parker Hazen. Jones yeah. on the wing. Look for him to get Asajula in, touches early. Four on the shot clock. Deep three coming. That's off the mark. And the rebound by Vinzant. 
So a good first defensive possession for the Flames as they keep Lipscomb off the board. Yeah, I'm really more concerned with Liberty's offense. Again, it can't be run the shot clock down and, and hope Darius McGee can bail you out. They need movement, player movement, ball movement. Shiloh Robinson can't hit the three. And the rebound to Pruitt. Flames need to get Kyle Rode involved shooting the basketball. Really quiet first half, just 0 of 3 from the field. Remember, he's had a career high against these Bisons earlier this season with yeah. 24. The second half of the season for Kyle has been an offensive explosion. They definitely need him tonight. Pruitt spinning his way to the free throw line, fading away. No, the offensive rebound by Asajla and the putback. Man, just when Liberty thinks, hey, Pruitt misses, the big fella gets himself involved. So strong down in there using his body for the putback. Road handles the basketball. McGee, you look for him, he had slipped and fallen down. Now Darius into traffic and draws the foul. They count it. <laughs> wow. I didn't think he'd get that kind of continuation until next year. <laughs> Well, with Darius, I think everything, he, every time he moves is a shot. He's in his shooting motion. <laughs> Unbelievable. Just flip that thing up and in. And he has 16. Chance for one more and a chance to tie this ball game up. I guess when you're the back-to-back -back A-Sun player of the year, maybe you get yeah. the benefit of the doubt, huh? Again, that free throw misses. Just a phenomenal player. Every adjective you can throw at him, he's lived up to, but... The supporting cast, he needs his buddies to step up and help him in the scoring column in the second half. He has 16, and Liberty's 25. Benham, strong on the three-point attempt. McGee pulls the board. Full head of steam. McGee gets into traffic. No, the follow twice. Preston couldn't convert. Again, couldn't put it in. Three times, Preston was at the rim. Couldn't get any of them to fall. Jones backing out, resetting the offense. 15 on the shot clock. Directing traffic now as they get it in the hands of Asajala. Ball screen to roll. Okay, they don't use him. The kick out, oh. Benham all by himself. That goes down. Big shot by Benham, but the touch pass by Asajala, that was pretty. Because as the ball was in flight, the Flames collapsed on him. Touch pass out to Benham. That they were talking about is what, what a basketball IQ. The first three pointer of the night for the Bisons, and it puts them up four. McGee kicks corner three coming for McDowell. That goes down. There you go. That's what Liberty needs. They need some help. Keegan McDowell. Nothing would be better for the Flames if. If he can build off of that three right there. In the first meeting, Lenny Acuff called McDowell the wild card for this Flames <laughs> offense. He says you can't let him get going. Oh, wild shot from Asajla off the mark. Liberty basketball with a chance to regain the lead. Yeah, good hesitation step through. I think he just got a little bit off balance. They had Preston match up with Pruitt. They passed on it. Instead, the deep three is off the mark. Again, you had a mismatch yes. down low, and Liberty looks away from it. And Liberty's, I mean, uh, Lipscomb's doing that because they're scrambling to cover the three-point arch, so they're, you know, they, you'll get some mismatches in switching, but Liberty doesn't take advantage of it. Sajla has it, kicks it back out to Pruitt. They give it right back to the big man. Benham, eight on the shot clock, trying to create some space behind the back dribble. Spinning into traffic, Asajula will shoot the three. That doesn't fall. And that wasn't because the shot clock was running down. <laughs> He's got that range, too. Kyle Rode has it top of the key, trying to drive past Hazen. Off the window, no. Danced off the rim and quickly lips him the other way. Threw it into traffic, no. Hazen got the rebound, somehow saved it in. Now deflected out of bounds, it will stay with the Bisons with 22 on the shot clock. It has been a frenzy the last couple of minutes here in Liberty Arena. And it looks like it's heading for a fantastic finish. A one-point game here in the second half of this A-Sun quarterfinal. One-point ball game. Lipscomb leading Liberty 29-28 here in the second half.
What a, what a strange ball game that is in so <laughs> really many ways. Like you look at Lipscomb, you know, one of ten from beyond the arc. They have one assist. One assist in the game yeah, now, at this point. Again, a lot of times they're going off the dribble, right? but one assist because Asadula was out for the vast majority of that first half. And again, he's a guy that they'll run that offense through, but he has it right now. <laughs> Missing again. And it will stay with Lipscomb. So Liberty deflects it out of bounds. And the Bisons will get an extra possession. Yeah, and, and, and again, Asajula with another great, really nice move and a, and a really close look doesn't fall for him. He's just 2 of 10 from the field. Benham on the wing. He leads the way with 13 points tonight. Now that three ball off the mark. And the rebound to Kyle Rowe. Let's check in again with Emily. Yeah, guys, usually it's Kyle Rode who is so vocal in those Liberty huddles. This time around, it was Keegan McDowell being extremely vocal uh, and telling his teammates what he sees on the defensive end, especially how to play and defend Asan Asazi. Deep three goes down for Darius McGee, and that gets this crowd into it. Yeah, they needed that. They needed something, some kind of positive momentum. He now has 19 of Liberty's 31. Pruitt spins at the free throw line, well defended, rises up over McGee, is short on the shot attempt. McGee kicks out, Kyle Rowe, open three ball, that's off the mark. Tapped out and a whistle going in, to go against the Flames. No, I take that back, they got... Yeah, somebody come on the whistle. I think it was Pruitt maybe came under Preston or as, as Blake was going for the offensive rebound. That is number three on Asajula. Oh, Asajula. Wow. So a huge call. They're going to leave him out there right now with three. If you're Liberty, do you try to just take it right at him, see if you can get that fourth? Well, there's Blake. They are going Preston right to him. Preston goes into him, tries to shoot up and over the top of him, well short. Tough night for Preston. He's one of six from the field. Benham has had the hot hand. That three goes down. 16 points for Trey Benham. The freshman not playing like a freshman here tonight. He certainly is. He's been the leader, especially with Asadzula off the floor in the first half. And he came to play tonight. Cross-court pass, McDowell, pump fakes. Now stepping through, gets it to fall. Back and forth we go, Liberty on top by one. Benham putting his head down to drive and draws the foul. Foul called on Blake Preston. That's his first foul. No, take it back, that's his second. First team foul on the Flames. KJ Johnson in there now. He had six points in the first half, really helped provide a lift with the Sajla out of the ball game. You can see five out of the perimeter, leaving a lot of space for penetrators. Well, the crossover by Johnson, and he couldn't finish. Oh, wow. Oh, what a move to get there. Just couldn't seal the deal. Man, he's so tough off the dribble. McGee thought about launching. Now gets it over to McDowell. Pump fake. Pass out to Kyle Rowe on the wing. Spinning back to the paint. Great defense by Parker Hazen as he made that a difficult look. Benham challenged, couldn't get it to fall. No points are coming easy tonight, guys. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to get bailed out by the, the referees. They're letting them bang. McGee pulls up, way off the mark. That one deflected out into the hands of Benham. A little bit quick on that shot attempt. Yeah, again, because Darius can go get that at any time. Johnson, wild shot as he was guarded by Shiloh Robinson. Lipscomb now one of their last 10 from the field. Yeah, and Liberty 
cold as well. Kyle Road had his eyes on the rim, now decides to work the offense a bit. Gets it to McDowell, left alone, wing three, no. Liberty now five of 25 from three-point range. Pruitt over the top of McGee, that goes around and through. Well, you can see there's another opportunity where Lipscomb, Will Pruitt just gets himself right into the heart of the paint with a couple dribbles, nice little turnaround eight-footer. That's not, Matt, what the, what the pack line is known for. McGee in trouble, kicks it out. Keegan McDowell, pump fake, gets it to Kyle Rowe. That wing three, off the mark. His shooting woes continue tonight. 0 of 7 from the field. Benham, in rhythm, three ball. That's pure. <laughs> he is in his own tonight. Trey Benham with 19 points. He's doing it to his dad's alma mater tonight. <laughs> Man, he is fired up. The energy he brings, the key tries to answer, and he does. Back and forth, everything you'd expect from a tournament game in March, man. Nothing comes easy here tonight. A big bucket for the player of the year, and a huge game from a freshman coming into his own. Trey Benham with 19 for the Bisons. They lead it by one. One-point ball game here, Lynchburg. Lipscomb leads at 37-36. Taking a look around the conference tonight, those other quarterfinal ball games. Jacksonville in control most of the night. They kept Central yeah. Arkansas at arm's length. Jacksonville State starting to stretch that lead a bit. And Bellarmine, despite a big night so far from Tavian Dunmartin, they lead it by four over FGCU. Some of your ESPN experts, this is who they picked to win the conference. Couple on Liberty, one on Jacksonville State, and you got John Gassaway. He likes those Dolphins. Why not yeah. for the kind of defense they've played this year? Yeah, they played a, they had a really good year and are playing really good basketball, too, right now. Flames are locked up in a battle here tonight. The underdog Bisons have come to play. That three ball, K.J. Johnson doesn't fall. Liberty with a chance to take back the lead. Five lead changes tonight. And that one just thrown away. Shiloh Robinson expected McGee to cut through the lane. Darius broke it off. And it'll go out of bounds and get us to a media timeout. Liberty trails by one. Lipscomb trying to come into Liberty Arena. Knock the Flames out of this A-Sun championship. A little payback for those couple <laughs> yes. of A Sun finals that didn't go their way. Hey, don't think that's not in play a yeah. little bit. Sajla back out there now for the Bisons. Benham, though, has been the story, and he fires quickly from beyond the arc. Can't connect. The rebound to Warfield. So, who else on this Liberty team that's will the, step up offensively? That's the big question of the night, man. Darius is doing everything he can do, but Flames have kind of become one-dimensional. He has it. The lob. Preston sends it in. Great feed, and Preston busts that one home. Yeah, I like that play because anytime you run that ball screen, two guys are going to go with Darius McGee coming out the other side. Nice roll, good pass, good finish. Pruitt turns the corner. Gave it up. Now they kick out. Swing it to Ben up top of the key. He'll put it on the deck. Takes a little contact. Couldn't quite get it to fall. Again, really poised and patient. Uh, Lipscomb is playing a really, a really good ball game. Playing within their offense. McGee had that one deflected out of bounds. It will stay with Liberty. Here is that lob just a moment ago. Yet again, Asajula has to show, because when Darius comes off of that screen, I mean, he could just fire it up, and he kind of gets caught in no man's land. Darius puts that thing right on the money, and Blake finishes it with the dunk. Kyle Rhodes driving now, right into Hazen, draws the contact. Couldn't convert, but a 
get a couple of free throws. Yeah, I, I love the decision. Pump fake, but the shots aren't falling from three. Attack the rim. Doesn't get the finish, but gets the, gets the foul as well. They're not falling for road tonight, but he also has seven rebounds, six assists. Yeah. You take a look at McGee, McDowell, what they've done. The rest of the team, it's been a struggle. There's the first point of the night for Kyle Rode. A guy that in a Sun Games has averaged over 12 and a half a contest. Yeah, when they got to conference play, Kyle Rode just switched gears in his mind and became an aggressive scorer. He's done a great job doing what he can tonight, but it's going to take some help from some other guys, too. Benham kicks it out. Jones. Gets to the free throw line now, backs it out, 12 on the shot clock. Penetrate, pass. Again, good poise. They're not forcing anything. Asajla right into the chest oh, of Preston. Shot. Oh, high arcing shot that falls through. Yeah, took the contact. Used that contact to create a little space for the baby hook. Six points for Asajla. McGee gets it on the wing. That's yeah. partially blocked. Great defense by Greg Jones to get a piece of it. That is the textbook definition of, of a great contest. Benham at the rim. Gets it to fall. 21 now for Trey Benham. He's closing in on his career high of 26. Telling you these Bisons are attacking that paint. That's where the bread is buttered. They are just doing the job. And McGee. McDowell stepped out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds on the catch, so the turnover, the seventh of the night for Liberty, will give it back to the Bisons. Sana Sajla, quiet night by his standards, but he's helped his team get a one-point advantage. This presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Foster Fuels, turn up the heat, and by Carter Bank & Trust, member FDIC. Game's been a one possession game almost the entire second half. Lipscomb leads by one. If Lipscomb goes on to win this game, it's going to be remembered as the Trey <laughs> Benham game. He has 21. Oh my goodness. The rest of his team has 20 tonight. And that's the most at rest he's looked all night right there. He's, right. Had, a, he's had a scowl on his face. He's had an intense look. Get his team fired up. And man, he has delivered in the scoring column. He has played with purpose tonight. He has the ball right now, gives it up to Murr. They go inside. Asajla worked uh -huh. himself around Blake Preston. It's been that kind of night. It sure he has. has gotten so many good looks that just haven't rolled in. Great moves that have led to great looks. He kind of puts his hands up like, I'm doing everything I can do. That thing is just rattling out. McDowell gives it up. Deep three coming from Darius McGee. Too strong. But Matt. Even though the shots aren't falling down there, the quality of shot that Lipscomb is getting in comparison to no Liberty doubt. is night and day. No doubt. Yeah, they are getting a lot of great looks at the rim. At the rim, either on drives or Asajula. And Liberty, it seems like they're just not getting anything clean. Asajula, this time, the soft touch off the window goes down. Yeah, send it up to the inside. You know, bang in the body a couple times. Nice spin move back to the baseline side. Under six and a half to go in this ball game. McGee knifing through, draws the foul. They wave it off. They say it's on the floor. That foul, it looks like they got Greg Jones, Jones on the yeah. whistle. Yeah, right there on the reach. Here it is. Knows the double isn't coming. Sets it up to the middle. Nice little heat, man. He, he can go both ways. In a game like this, you start to feel in the late stages like every possession is so important. Ten on the shot clock. Road kicks it out. Warfield baseline. In trouble, kicks out. Road open from three. Missed the follow, no, but Shiloh Robinson able to draw the foul. Yeah, that's a that's a tip in. And so that should be going is on Asajula. Oh. That's number four. So a big foul going against Asajula here with 6.05 to go. Yeah, I mean, if you're Lenny Acuff, this is not a bad time to give him a little rest. Yeah, you know, bring him out, give him a little rest, let him collect himself, and then bring him back in for the home stretch. 
Shiloh Robinson with five points tonight. Junior out of Kearney, Nebraska has one more free throw coming. He gets it. Back to a one-point game. In a lot of ways, Lipscomb has been maybe more effective offensively when Asajula has been out of there. <laughs> well, they've certainly not been any less. They've changed their, you know, they won't get close touches. But again, they've spread it out a little more and have really been attacking off the dribble. You see a five out on the perimeter. Hazen kicks out. That three rattled out. Boy, good look from Will Pruitt. And Hazen with the penetration to pass. Now it's Rhodes' turn to drive. Got to the rim and laid it in. Liberty goes in front by a point. This crowd coming to its feet. And I think I've said it, I really like Lipscomb's poise tonight. That pass, Jones lost the handle. He was cutting along the baseline, just couldn't gather it in. And again, it's a turnover, but they're controlling their own destiny offensively. They're not, Liberty's not forcing them into shots they don't want to take. And again, that one kicks off his hand, but again, I, I think their composure and poise is really, is really, Lips is really showing some stuff. Tonight. And Asajla heads back to the scorer's table. Yeah. So he'll yep. check in at the next dead ball. Liberty up by one. Darius McGee with the ball in his hand. McDowell, top of the key. To the corner now. Warfield, 10 on the shot clock. He goes in the post. Kyle Road tried to get it off the window. No good. And here comes Benham the other way. Hazen oh, tried to feed Pruitt. It looked like Liberty kicked it. They did. It will stay with Lipscomb. And that will get Asajula back in the ballgame. Seventeen seconds on the shot clock. Liberty clinging to a one-point lead. Benham thought about launching from three. Will back up, shoot one from deeper. That's off the mark. That may have been the one shot yes, that, I, that I can think of tonight that maybe they, they rushed a little, they could have gotten a better look. Yeah, he kind of thought about it, and then that step back pull up is not necessarily his, but other than that one, man. McGee mid-range jumper, that's pure. The throwback. Yes. McGee to the mid-range. Yeah, he doesn't always need to get to the to the rim. He needs to utilize that a little bit more. Liberty Arena's buzzing. Flames up three. Asajla has the smaller road on it. Goes to work. Now passes out to Hazen. He's not there. Yeah, Hazen cut. Darius McGee went in the double. Causes the turnover. We got a little momentum going for this Liberty Flames team, Matt. They lead it by three with 3.50 to go. This place is going crazy. Darius McGee trying to lead the Flames to a win down the stretch. Three-point ball game. Liberty leading 46-43. 3.50 to go here in this contest. Well, got a moment. Take a look at the Ace Sun Yearly Awards. Player of the Year, we told you, Darius McGee goes back to back. Kevin Samuel, the big man there at FGCU. Yeah. Vincent Player of the Year, Dunmartin, newcomer. We saw those two have great games against Liberty here a couple weeks back. Cameron Hunter, the freshman of the year, and Ray Harper, deserving coach of the year as he led his Gamecocks to the number one overall seat. Yeah, first year in the conference. Making some noise there at Jacksonville State. Three-point ball game, Liberty basketball. We're seeing some full-court yeah. pressure now. Look, two guys around Darius McGee. Yeah, Jones is going to face guard McGee all over the court. Darius finally gets his hand on the basketball. Ten seconds to elapse on the shot clock. Well, let's see if they bring him a ball screen up high to use. He may just want to take Jones off the dribble himself. He's trying. Steps back, fading away. Off the rim, no, deflected out of bounds. It will go back to Lipscomb. Again, you get those possessions where you feel like a lot of people standing around waiting to see number two do something special. Yeah, and, and he can always go get a shot. Um, I just, you know, I just don't know. I, I just would rather see some passing and cutting and then bring it back around to Darius if there's nothing else developing. 
Jones gets it inside to Asajla. Kicks out to Hazen to get right back to the big man. Puts it on the deck. Goes over the top of Kyle Rowe. Oh, the soft touch. And Lenny Acuff quickly takes a timeout. Ten points now for Asajla to go along with seven rebounds. Great, get great patience by Asajla. Gary, uh, Keegan McDowell kind of disguised it. He was kind of halfway to a double, halfway not. But Asajla realizes it's not coming. Makes a nice move. Here's what I like about that, too. Asajla trusts he that sure he's going to see it again. Yeah. So he's willing to kick <laughs> it out, reestablish, and he knows he's going to see the basketball again. Yeah, that's exactly right. And again, he'll kick it out and then go better his position. Yeah. Reseal, you know, get himself a little bit deeper, and then get a retouch. And again, when the ball's in his hands, it's not just about him. Other guys play off of him. They'll back cut and do some different things. But I think now when they give him that ball, down here at crunch time, when he gets it in there, I think he's going to make a move. One point ball game, 3.06 to go. Here's that pressure once again being shown by Lipscomb. Yeah, I mean, you may not be able to keep Darius from getting it, but if you can delay that, that's what they're trying to do. Greg Jones, he's just all just selling out to try to get in Darius's, get in his face, make it hard on him in any way he can. McGee using the screen, gets in the paint, kicks it out. Shiloh Robinson now swings it to Rowe, 10 on the shot clock. Shiloh gonna try to drive on Asajla, lost the basketball, taken away by Jones. Just lost the handle, a turnover, and Lipscomb has a chance to take a lead. Asajla with a size advantage on Rowe, goes right into his chest, a foul call. They'll get road on the whistle. Yeah, I mean, I think you know the game plan. They're going to get into Asajal, and he's going to back his defender down. I'm kind of surprised that they're not going to run the double at him, but this time they bring Blake, Blake Preston in. Yeah, they get a bigger body in there as Preston replaces Robinson. Pruitt to inbound and get it to Asajal. Here we go. Right into Preston, kicks out. Pruitt has it, gives it right back to him. Look at Blake Preston reaching around, deflecting it away, and then gathering what, it in. What a great play. What a huge steal. He timed it right. Got his body around so he wasn't a foul. Huge play right there by Blake Preston. McGee driving into a Sajula off the window. Wow, that was a lot of contact. Unbelievable finish by Darius McGee. Back to a three-point advantage for the Flames. Under two to go. Pruitt on the wing. Everybody looking for Asajula. And if it's not there, Benham, three ball. Oh, had a good look. He sure did. A chance for Liberty to build on this lead with under a minute and a half to play. Liberty, you know, again, you're working the ball around, get a good shot. If your lips can play tough D, don't give up anything easy. McGee in the lane, weaving through traffic, kicks it out to Kyle Rowe. Right back to McGee. Open look from downtown. Off the mark. Oh, Tap down the play. Flames will gather it in. Oh, huge play by Blake Preston to tip it out and let Liberty retain the possession. Preston's doing it. He's doing it on both back, ends now. Back to back, huge plays by Blake Preston. Flames content to run a little clock. McDowell, Warfield was left all alone. Now he's looking for help. Keegan, two on the shot clock. He hoists. Off the mark, fight for the rebound, and Asajula grabs it. Three-point game under a minute to go. Crunch time in Lynchburg. And Lenny Acuff wants to talk about it. Does it get any better than this, Matt? Oh, this, my goodness. This is what March Madness is all about. Now, maybe not a game in the 40s, but it has been a battle tonight. Oh my goodness, again, I'm not worried about the score, 40s, 80s. You see two teams come out here and fight for their very lives. I mean, it's one and done here. Loser goes home. Both teams have had a game plan, have executed really well. Liberty, Liberty's come, the shots have come alive just at the last possible moment. All right, well, if you're Lipscomb right now and you're Lenny Acuff, you know Asana Asajla, yeah. everything's going through him. Yes. You're down three. There's almost 42 seconds left. Still time to get a, a, a two and get back on defense. But you can't, if you use a lot of time in the shot clock, suddenly you're starting to limit your, your 
the possibilities and what you want to do here, right? Yeah, and it's not taking them that long. They'll get the ball in bounds, a pass or two. They'll be able to get Asana Sajala a touch. And then let's see, I get, if it's me, I think you, you let the big fella eat. Let him go to work down there. He's had success. Again, a two is fine. You got plenty of, of time left. So one other thing to think about, if you're Liberty, not that you would do this now, but Asajla is just a 63% free throw shooter. We have seen teams foul him in late game situations and force him to go to the line and earn him there. Yeah, I'd say, you know, you're gonna take some, some body in the chest, but if you see he kind of turns the corner on you and it's gonna be an easy shot, you might not be bad, uh, uh, it might not be bad to foul him. Everybody on their feet inside Liberty Arena. And again, you got Trey Benham out there lurking at the three-point line. Keep an eye on him, too. Jones is tripped. Tripped at the top of the key. Now, that's just the third team foul on the Flames. Foul road whistled for it. Yeah, so that's not a damaging foul. There's to be no, no free throws coming, but... Jones kind of limping. I think he... Hit the floor, his knee hit the floor pretty hard. All right, Liberty gets Vinzant in for Warfield. Road matched up on Asajla right now, so the Flames going a little bit smaller. Blake Preston still on the bench. Be interesting, let's see if they, if they change things up and maybe double on the catch. They go inside to Asajla, working on Road. Playing Kicks it out, up. Hayes it open for three in the tie. No, oh. the rebound to Vinzant. And a foul is called on Pruitt. A huge rebound for the freshman Joseph Vinzant, who had just subbed into the ball game yeah. at the previous dead ball. And Matt, he was off balance, a little bit out of position, but that was just pure effort to go get it and try to land. And sure, he you know he secured it just in time for the foul. So now the Flames need to find a way to inbound this thing. Brody Peebles subs in for Liberty, gives them a little offense. Keegan McDowell all by his lonesome. They get it to him, and he's quickly fouled. McDowell, for his career, an 88% free throw shooter. He's one of those guys you want at the line. And he'll be shooting one and one. Shooting one and one again. There's 21 seconds. That's a lot of time. Certainly, if he can hit this. Make it a two-possession game. That's certainly advantageous for Liberty. And the senior knocks it down. So if your lips come, you got to make or miss. You got to come down, make a quick pass or two, get a good look. Nothing crazy. And if you're Liberty, you got to defend, but do not foul. Timeout on the floor. Liberty with a five-point lead. Offense, you look at the score, I don't even tell you <laughs> offense has been hard to come by tonight. Liberty is 6 of 32 from three-point range. That's just under 19%, and yeah. yet they're in position to yes. win this game. I don't know how they've done it. I'll have to re-watch this one. I can't even, but, I mean, right now, it's still in the balance, Matt. I mean, 21 seconds in basketball time. is a long time. So, Lipscomb, you know, they're going to draw something up. Again, watch for, like, Pruitt to push the ball really quick. Maybe a pass or two. You got Benham out there who's been, who's hit some threes. Again, I, I'm not even opposed to coming down to get this Agile a, a touch really quick. He'll make a quick move. And then, you know, timeout, set your defense. Right, and, and he's proven to be the best passer on this team anyway. So, yeah, if, but it's got to be quick. Whatever yeah. they get with 21 ticks on the clock, it's got to be quick in this situation. Quick check around the conference. Other quarterfinal games in action. And it looks like the higher seeds are going to prevail in all of them. Bellarmine pulling away from FGCU. That yeah. it surprises me. It does. I, I really was unsure how Bellarmine would handle Kevin Samuel in yeah. the post. And they must have done a great job uh, there. Again, I think Bellarmine's been, been kind of the unsung hero of, of kind of the season, a little bit under the radar, not quite talked about enough. What a, what a, what a season they've had, and then it looks like they're going to get a big win. Here we go, 21.3. Yeah, so you want to get this clock started quick. Back pedal, no careless fouls. Contest every shot hard. Try to make them run clock. Jones for three, partially blocked. It goes out of bounds. 
Or was it? No, they say it was not touched. They say it was an air ball that gives the ball back to Liberty. I thought maybe Warfield got Man. a fingertip on it. Well, he certainly bothered the shot, and I think what happened is Greg Jones had to shoot it higher because of the outstretched arms. You're exactly yes. right. Yep, he did not get a, a piece of that, but he altered the shot. They've got a foul. And they foul Kyle Rowe with 7.8 left. And you see why Zay Warfield has been playing more minutes these last several games. He is so trustworthy on the defensive end. He's got length, he's got athleticism, and that was a incredible contest right there. The Flames 7.8 away from advancing to the A-Sun semis. The other thing about that is they, they come up short, Lipscomb does, and they ran a lot of the clock. It's true. Rode with the free throw. The Flames pushing that lead to six. This one, yeah, is this is probably going to do it. This one is the big one because this will make it a three possession game, and I do not think there is enough time. And he gets <laughs> them both. <laughs> he made it interesting, but up seven. That may just do it, but oh my goodness, Matt, what a game. Again, nothing. If you're Liberty, do not foul. They commit the foul. Well, there. they got one to give. Right, they've got a few to give. So they commit the foul. My there with 6.4. When you get when they get down into shooting range, then you don't want to make some kind of crazy foul doing a to make them run clock. Screw it, puts it up, partially blocked, and that's what you're talking about, Naz. The foul on the three-point attempt by Shiloh Robinson, just unnecessary. Yes. And if you're Shiloh, you need to just walk away yeah, right yeah. now. Yes, This yes. is not the time. <laughs> well, Shiloh's just saying, I, I got all ball. We'll take a look at it. But that's, that's, this is not the time for that. <laughs> so Pruitt to the strike. Gets the first to fall. And that's this, this has been a grind. Tonight yeah. has been yes. a grind. You're talking about two. Tough teams, yes. great winning traditions, two of the better coaches yes. in this league, and it has been a grind from start to and finish. It's been just guts. Uh, I mean, in Lipscomb, man, they did so many great things. They were just willing to pass. I mean, again, they were the aggressor, and they were getting better shots, and, but Liberty just found a way just to dig down deep and just grind out baskets. Hang around and man at the last moment the shot started to fall just when they needed to on a night when you hold Liberty to six of 32 from three <laughs> And 33 percent overall from the field uh, Boy, I, What an effort they refused to get discouraged. They kept fighting Stopped the Sajula when they had to oh my goodness The flames earned that one they sure did. Lipscomb gave them all they wanted. Oh, they and this, this is a Lipscomb team. They've got some young pieces. Yeah. We saw one of them tonight. Yeah, they got, they're they going to be good for a while. They got people coming back. And you can, we cannot say it enough. They played a great game. They had the perfect game plan against Liberty. Kept them at bay from three. Got to the paint. They won the paint tonight. But they just come up a little bit short. So Liberty advances on to the semifinals. It appears they'll play Bellarmine on Saturday. Yes, that's because of that reseeding. And so that should be a good one. Saturday evening, cannot wait for that one. For Paul Azigan, I'm Matt Warner saying so long from Lynchburg, Virginia, where once again the final score is Liberty 52, Lipscomb 47. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.